Welcome to Retro Bassin. It is Sunday here in Texas, and unfortunately about most of the fishing I'm doing today is right here with old Jimmy Houston. Hope everybody out there in Retro Bass land is uh, doing well. We've actually got some big plans this week to get out on the water um, with a, a bunch of new old baits that I've picked up recently, uh, as well as, by popular request, have a couple of different run-throughs we're gonna be doing. Um, one on some of the different tackle, tackle boxes. We've got a pretty cool crankbait video coming up, uh, looking at the history of all the crankbaits uh, that are out there, including the first ever crankbait invented. Um, as well as uh, the much requested rod and reel rundown. So all that is to come on Retro Bassin. Uh, in the meantime, I actually do have a few packages that have been sitting around the old Retro mailbox that we're going to open today. But first, I'm going to get on to Jimmy Houston. Ooh, check out that hummingbird. I think I've like got the same one on the old uh, Retro wagon. <laughs> By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the glory days of bass fishing. Consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. That way you know when we post a new video like this one. So there's a few pretty cool collections that I've picked up as of late that I've been meeting to get to. I have been um, going down a little bit of a crankbait rabbit hole truth be told, as of late. I think what set this whole crankbait craze off, and I'm gonna talk about it in an upcoming video, was an article I read by Bernie Schultz, a uh, bass pro who is like a total lore history buff. Uh, and he's got a really cool article on the history of the crankbait, and in fact, the first ever crankbait. More to come on that particular bait, but in the meantime, I have definitely been going down a little bit of a uh, crankbait rabbit hole. In addition to that, being the middle of summer, if it ain't a big worm I'm throwing, it's a deep diving crankbait. Some of the best crankbaits uh, around come from the great state of Texas, and I think somewhere in my little retro mailbox, I've got some very cool old school Texas cranks, I think. Sounds rattly. The rattles get a little bit louder. Oh, wow. So this is a haul that I picked up. All of these are classic boxed and unfished bomber crankbaits. This is that classic design. I was inspired off this. We did a, a, an episode a little while back and my buddy Brandon caught a couple fish on a Whopper Stopper Hellbender. So that inspired me to look for similar metal heart-shaped lipped lures. I found these bombers online and I could not resist. It's got that nice classic metal lip. It's got that almost like a saltwater style clip on it. Classic bomber body. A couple hooks. I do love the rattle on that. <laughs> and it's $1.49 from Grandpa's. That's like pretty much what I paid. Pretty cool package insert. It says, Bomber Fishing Lures. Okay, so it is in Gainesville, Texas at uh, 326 Lindsay Street. So I think that that location is obviously no longer a bomber factory, but I believe that they had the a mural painted on the wall that said bomber that should still be there today. Next time I'm in Gainesville, I will check that out. <laughs> so much like fishing little companies today, the bomber classic is available in five sizes. And there's the original classic bomber. Ah, what does it say about this bad boy? 
So the bomber fishing lure is designed as a deep running lure to be used uh, equally successfully by the novice or the expert. That's perfect for me for one of those two reasons. The bomber is a floating lure. It will run much deeper than virtually all sinking type baits. If you backlash, take your time in getting it out. Uh, then reel the bomber will give you the same results if you had made a good cast. That is true. Your bomber is so designed that most of the time, if it, come, if it becomes entangled, by the way, I just like, look at that font. That is not like a font for a retro bassin man. Oh my goodness, I need my readers. The bomber is effective as a top water. At rest, it floats. Often, the attention of fish can be aroused by the following manner. Wait a minute, fish in this is a top water. I gotta read this. Cast your bomber close to a spot which may harbor lurking fish. Allow your lure to lie at rest for at least a few seconds. Then twitch your rod tip. Your bomber will bob and dance in the water surface. Then retrieve as above. Huh. Okay. I totally learned something today. So they're saying to take this bait and fish it as a top water. That kind of makes sense. Every crankbait floats, right? But you immediately want to get it deep as quickly as possible. So they're saying to let this guy... All right, we're going to try that, like, tomorrow. Uh, your bomber is very effective at trolling. Yeah, I had a feeling this looks like a trolling bait. Uh, because of the extreme death possible, many times good results may be had by this type of fishing lure when other methods or other types of lures fail. We believe that if a few general instructions are followed, most fishermen, retro bassers excluded, uh, will obtain results never before found in an underwater lure. Ah, I love it. So that is it, the classic bomber from Gainesville, Texas. By the way, we got a few more. I'm gonna save the rest of this thing for a bomber episode, sorry. So there we go, so there's one bomber, that is the classic frog pattern, old school. You don't see Gubins in that color. What else we got? All right, another one from Grandpa's for $1.49. I mean, what a deal I got on these baits. <laughs> Ooh, that's like a, like a little spinning version of a bomber. Look how good that looks. Uh, nice perch pattern. Yellow, white belly. Woo! That's a good looking bait. And that's this model 205. I don't know if that is the, um, the color or the size. But that looks like a little... It's probably cool rounds. I don't know where Grandpa's bait and tackle is, but I got a feeling it would be my kind of joint. Ooh, okay, look at that color. Oh, that's, that is smoking. That is like a yellow and black with a little bit of gold and oh man. Look at that. His orange eyes, and the belly. Woof. That is almost. Almost too pretty to fish. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. That's like a striper model there. Check that dude out. Ooh. That's like a nice, I don't know, half ounce model. That could catch a bass though. I don't know why, but I just love that classic bomber look. I also like that, by the way, when lures would come in a package that you could save. Like how awesome is that? You can fish a lure, dry it off, and put it back in the box. Like, it makes too much sense. Okay, we've got a bomber in the classic, some sort of like it's a brown crawdad pattern. I've actually got a wooden version of this in the same color pattern. Check that out. It's almost subtle, but you can see there's some black lines in there, brown, 
And I guess they all had that orange eye, huh? Nice. Ooh, look at that. That is an insane looking color. It's like a green perch with a sparkle on it. Oh. Herring bone on the top. Orange belly with a red chin. Ooh. That's sweet. Wow. That's a nice bait. And I get another one that's, that will definitely catch, but oh, that's going to be, that's going to be tough to throw, and that one's going to be tough not to throw. <laughs> it's like the story of my life. So there is a little smaller version, also from Grandpa's. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's actually got like a bomber sticker on it. Ooh, that's almost like a chartreuse pinfish color. Check that guy out. Solid lip. Here's a teeny one. Woo! I don't know if this color is officially called Christmas tree, but I've heard it referred to as Christmas tree. You can see why. It's sort of a limey, silvery, sparkly, a beautiful monstrosity. Look at that thing. It looks like right out of the 50s. Oh. <laughs> That's a cool color. And by the way, aren't these like an insane shape? Like, oh, ooh, look at that guy. Man, I think they used to use like, I don't know what, some plutonium or something in the, in the chartreuse back then. Holy smokes. That is, that is glowing. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. I'll right, we'll check out the last one. Ooh, that could be like my favorite like fish catching color of the bunch. Look at that. Nothing like Christmas tree-esque on it, but just a nice sort of green scale minnow to it. Ooh, and that top. Bottom. I mean that, oh, that would catch a fish. All right, I've got to see if this bomber lure factory is still in existence. So, Gainesville, Texas. Okay, so I'm on LoreNet right now. Let's we'll see what it says. Uh, Bomber Lures makers of the Fat Free Shad, Model A, Long A. I mean, yes, all those things, but the classic Bomber. Hmm. Let's see, today Bomber's Lures produces tournament winning crankbaits and other lures. Yada, yada. What about the history? Yeah, nothing there. Uh, okay, here's an article called Fishing History, the history of fishing lures and fishing tackle. Voices from the past, the history of the Bomber Bait Company in 1947. Okay, I just Googled Bomber history, by the way. Okay, so the original Bomber was invented in 1944, and this article came out in 1947. An original article written by Jack Rutledge in 1947 uh, says Texas is responsible for most fishing plugs, good and bad. It says uh, get your fishing box and pick out your favorite plug, uh, the one you've had the most luck with, and take a look at it. It was probably made in Texas. This is true. So the largest factory we've seen to date is the Bomber Bait Company in Gainesville, Texas, owned and operated by Ike Walker. John W. Parker and C.S. Tuberville. Ooh, they've uh, applied for a patent and both the design and name of, quote, the bomber. But in the meantime, they produce about a thousand bombers a day and are 400 dozen behind in orders. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, the original design was uh, whittled out by uh, Ralph Wom uh, three and a half years ago uh, and it's been changed and improved upon. Okay. It was designed to get depth, to wiggle underwater while being retrieved, and fishermen realize the value of both, especially on eBay. 
Parker says the bomber will go down as much as 16 feet down to where the fish are uh, while being reeled in and maintaining about 10 feet under the water and quote, wiggle like hell. <laughs> that should be like a t-shirt <laughs> or a dance, I don't know. Um, they make one basic design, but in three sizes and 17, like awesome colors. The body of the bomber is made from cedar, not these. Um, in his special type and Parker won't tell where he gets it. The paint used has been tested and won't crack and it has triple hooks. I think they mean treble hooks or maybe they meant triple hooks and we just got it wrong over the years. This may sound like an advertising plug, but it's not. It's just a report on a plug that Parker says will catch fish when others don't because it goes down deep, it wiggles and it floats. He admits that most of the ideas fishermen have about his plugs are just plain superstition. And when it comes to Bomber, it delivers. There must be some truth to the claim because sales of the unadvertised and unpromoted bait have extended into Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Tennessee, New Mexico, Arizona, and of course, all over Texas. I don't know what year they stopped making the classic Bomber and switch to more of the uh, Model A series of bombers. But I was able to find a pretty cool spread in my 1978 Bass Pro Shops catalog on the original bombers. And I guess Grandpa's had a pretty good price at $1.49 because they were $1.69 in this catalog. <laughs> Check that out. Uh, not nearly as many colors as we found. I don't know if it's one of those things where over the years, these are definitely uh, probably, I would say, a little bit older than 1978. But maybe they started whittling down to fewer colors. And there's a spread in here on the next page with the Model A's. And this is probably where the future of the company was headed at the time. Certainly, you know, when you think of Bomber these days, folks think of that Larry Nixon classic, that Model 7A. But just the same... Pretty cool spread, at least it's got the one color that, that I do have, that frog pattern. Um, and the natural rainbow. Your choice, $1.69, list of $3.25. <laughs> do you know how many bombers I would buy if I found them at $1.69? <sighs> Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite crankbait is of all time. Until next time. Keep those bombers bombing, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.